Okay, so in this video, we want to take a short look at finite geometric sums. When you're summing consecutive powers of a fixed number, you are not always dealing with an infinite sum, with a series, but sometimes you are dealing with a simple finite sum. So n begins at a fixed starting point and ends at a fixed endpoint. So this would be r to the m plus r to the m plus 1 plus r to the m plus 2 all the way up to r to the uppercase n. So when we deal with such a finite geometric sum, can we still evaluate the sum without having to evaluate every power of r? And the answer is yes. And we have a very similar formula to the one we had developed for infinite geometric series. So here we'll be assuming that r is not equal to 1, and the first part of the formula is the same as for an infinite geometric series. So the first part of our numerator is the first term, of the sum, so this would be r to the m, over 1 minus r. This is exactly what you would get if the sum would go up to infinity. right? In the case of an infinite geometric series, if it does converge, if r is strictly less than 1 in absolute value, the series adds up to the first term over 1 minus r. But now we have a finite sum, so there is a correcting term here. And the missing term is the following. It is the first term times 1 minus r to the n minus m plus 1. And that's the correcting term. This is the only difference between a finite geometric sum and an infinite geometric series in which case this simply goes away. And this is always true as long as r is not equal to 1. And here there is no issue of convergence or divergence. A finite sum of finite numbers will always be finite, therefore will always exist. And if r is equal to 1, then the result is trivial, right? So we'll mention it, but it's not really interesting. as 1 to the n is always 1, so we're just adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 dot 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 plus 1 how many times. And you have to be careful here, it's not n minus m times, but it's actually n minus m plus 1 times. So if you're adding 1 with itself n minus m plus 1 times, the result, of course, is n minus m plus 1. So these are your two possibilities. Here's the formula for the finite geometric sum when r is any number but 1. And if r is 1, the result is essentially trivial. And let me show you with a simple example why when you sum from uppercase m to uppercase n that you do not have n minus m terms but you really have n minus m plus 1 terms. Let's look at just a very simple example. Suppose we start summing from, say, 3 to 7, r to the n. So this will be r cubed plus r to the 4 plus r to the 5 plus r to the 6 plus r to the 7. So how many terms are there here? Well, there are clearly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. But if you do 7 minus 3, that gives you 4 terms, but there are 5 of them. So when you have a finite sum and you're asking how many terms am I summing, it's always the upper bound of summation minus the lower bound of summation plus 1. So here we are summing 7 minus 3 plus 1 which equals 5 terms. And if you look at this formula, then you can even simplify it further by observing that n, the upper bound of summation, minus m, the lower bound, plus 1, is simply the number of terms that you are summing. So 
and you can squeeze that in. So when you have a finite geometric sum and you want to evaluate it, if it's not the trivial case when r is 1, then it's just the first term over 1 minus r times 1 minus r to the exponent that is simply the number of terms that you are summing. Let's look at a, an example of this formula. Again, we'll, we won't bother with r equals 1 as again the result is trivial. Suppose we are summing and beginning at 3 going up to 10, 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. So we're not summing exactly a fixed number to the n, but again with some algebra we can arrive at this form. So we'll just split these two up. This is 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 to the n, first step. The 1 half is a constant multiple with respect to n, so we can factor it outside. So we have 1 half times the sum from 3, sorry, not up to infinity but up to 10. From 3 to 10, and 1 to the n is always 1, so this is simply 1 over 2 to the n. 1 to the n is 1, 2 to the n is 2 to the n. And now we have a finite geometric sum, right? We are summing from 3 to 10, 1 half to the n, so here r is equal to 1 half. Which is not 1, and so we can use our general formula. So the first half of the formula is the first term over 1 minus r. Don't forget the 1 half as a constant multiple, so it just stays there. And now we take care of the finite geometric sum. Again, the first half will be the first term. Well, the first term is when n is 3, so we'll have 1 over 2 cubed, that is 1 over 8, over 1 minus r. r is 1 half over 1 minus 1 half. But that's only half the formula. Now we have the first term over 1 minus r. We have to multiply by 1 minus r to the number of terms that we are summing. So times 1 minus r, which is 1 half, 2. And if you recall, the number of terms we're summing is the upper bound minus the lower bound plus 1. So here this is 10 minus 3 plus 1. And we can now simplify a little bit. 1 minus a half is a half. A half over a half is 1, so these two cancel. And we're left with 1 over 8 times 1 minus 1 half 2. Well, 10 minus 3 is 7 plus 1 is 8. So in the end, you have 1 over 8 times 1 minus 1 to any power is 1 over 2 to the 8. And if you combine this as a single fraction, you will end up with 255 over 2048. And that is the exact value of our finite geometric sum. And again, to make this slightly more concrete, you can expand the series, and here it's actually a finite sum, so you can expand the whole thing out, and there's only eight terms, so it's not too much work. So when n is 3, you get 3 plus 1, 4, so it's 1 over 2 to the 4, plus when n is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, so 1 over 2 to the 5, plus 1 over 2 to the 6, and so forth. 
and we're going to go all the way up to when n is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. So this is our geometric series expanded out, or I should say geometric sum, as it's a finite sum expanded out. And we can count that we do indeed have eight terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we have just proved that the result of this sum is exactly as a single rational number, 255 over 2048. Now you could have, of course, skipped all this, as we're only adding up eight terms. So you could have added those terms directly without the formula, and it would have been not much more work. But what if, instead of going up to 10, we went up to 10,000? Then you wouldn't want to add up over 10,000, or roughly 10,000 numbers of this form. That would take up way too much time. And then the formula gives you a, an incredible shortcut. And that's it.